Hi again. In our last video, we looked at a plot using what's generally called Freytag's period, because it was developed in the 19th century by a guy named Gustav Freytag. In this video, I want to review the idea of character, especially in terms of protagonist and antagonist, but I also want to get you thinking about how plot and character work together. I said in the last video that the two things I want you to keep in mind while thinking about plot are normalcy and conflict. And as we reviewed the idea of dramatic structure, we used those ideas to guide us. A narrative starts in a state of normalcy, often described by the author in the exposition, but not always. The rising action begins when the main character first faces some conflict, and throughout the rest of the plot we see the character dealing with that conflict. Finally, the story ends with the denouement, which gives us a sense of the new state of normalcy. Now we need to think about who is living this once normal life and from where this conflict comes. In any good narrative, fiction or nonfiction, plot is important. The plot is what happens to someone. Every story will have a protagonist. We often think of this as the hero, but that term has become problematic in recent years. The protagonist, in the most simple terms, is the person at the center of the story, the person on whom the author has chosen to focus. In terms of normalcy and conflict, the protagonist is the character who faces the conflict. Often, but not always, we also have an antagonist. The antagonist is the character who causes the conflict that the protagonist has to struggle against. The antagonist upsets the order of the protagonist's play, and the story often develops around the protagonist's efforts to regain that balance. In other words, the antagonist disrupts the protagonist's sense of normalcy. If you get confused, just focus on the prefixes. Pro means for, ant means against. Think about politics. However, we should consider that not all narratives have an actual character as the antagonist. Sometimes what disrupts the normal life of the protagonist is not any one person, but rather a situation or event or just a change. We don't always have Darth Vader making things difficult. Sometimes it's nature, as in Jack London's short story to Billy Fire. Sometimes it's the whole society, as in Ray Bradbury's novel Fahrenheit 451. Sometimes it's technology, as in the movie 2001. As I said, plot is all about normalcy and conflict. So is that all there is to it? Sometimes, yes. Most Hollywood movies are all about the plot. What happens next? Great literature, though, is much more interested in how the plot affects the characters. So we have Freytag's pyramid to help us think about plot, but we want to draw a big arc over that pyramid from point A, the exposition, to point B, the denouement. What this arc represents is the transformation the characters undergo as a result of the plot. How do the events, all that tension, change the protagonist? What happens to any of us when we go through a crisis? We change for the better, we hope. So we want to think about that too, a lot actually. Call it the character arc, the way in which the character changes as a result of the plot of the story. Ultimately, it's not the plot of the story that we care about. Rather, it's how the plot has caused the character we care about to change. But not all characters change in the story. These minor characters are often called static characters for that very reason. They remain the same throughout the story. Let's go back to the Star Wars examples. Luke Skywalker in the original film changes as a result of that story's plot. Both Rey and Finn change as a result of the plot of The Force Awakens. But what about Chewbacca? Or R2-D2? They're important to the story, yes, but they don't change in any significant way. So we've talked about who the characters are and how they change as a result of the plot. Let's wrap this up by considering how the creators of a comic can make a unique character we will care about enough to follow through the course of the story. Characterization is the term we use to describe the ways in which an author or illustrator helps us see the characters, especially the protagonists, as real people, as people we like and care about. In understanding comics, Scott McCloud talks a lot about how comic creators use the idea of icons to help us connect with the characters. This, again, is an important advantage that comics have over purely textual narratives. But we can also see how the character behaves in different situations. We can see how the character dresses, how she decorates her dorm room, the kinds of movies she likes to watch, and the books she likes to read. All these small details help develop the most important characters. Another important technique is diction. In terms of literary characters, diction is basically how the character speaks. What kinds of words does she use? Does she have a large and complex vocabulary or a rather limited one? Does she have an accent? Does she use certain phrases repeatedly? So when reading comics, pay attention to those speech bubbles, not just what is said, 
but how it's said. All right, once again, thanks for watching. Remember to take Video Quiz 2 on Brightspace before our next class.